It doesn't seem possible. It's just too much of a reach. Science doesn't prove it. Where's the dead one? No one has a dead one. There aren't any bones. There's no teeth. A car would have hit one and killed it by now. I have hunted all my life and never seen one. I'm from the country. Raised cows since I was born. I've been a logger for 30 years and never saw nothing. There's millions and millions of people on this earth. Someone would have a good video by now. All those cell phones, all those game cameras. Where's one good picture? Valid. All valid points. Very logical. Very sensible. Very comforting. Until. Until 800 pounds of legend shows up. Now you can smell him. His eyes luminous. You're close enough to hear his voluminous breathing. Science and logic just caught the last bus out of here. You are now facing what shouldn't and can't be. Standing on the shards of a broken paradigm, you don't need a watch to know what time it is. It's zero squatch 30. John, thanks for coming in tonight to do Zero Squatch 30 with us. Uh, great to talk to you. Uh, if you wouldn't mind telling the folks, like, uh, give us some uh, background on on the kind of area you're from, uh, the area that we're talking about, uh, how you come about being where you were when these things unfolded. Um, well, first of all, it's nice to be here. Um, I come from, uh, like, countryside not really backwoods, backwoods, but I grew up in the country. Um, a lot of woods and fields around us. Um, good hunting areas. And uh, a place like that. Uh, until about, I don't know, five years ago, I finally moved out. But that's where I grew up, was out in right. the wooded areas. So, so you grew up um, like we did, like a lot of people did, just... Not really in the city, but not really 10 miles out in the country. They're just kind of a rural countryside kind of a setting. Didn't have any close neighbors, really. Yeah. My closest neighbor was probably a quarter mile up the road yeah. from us. And uh, we had uh, almost 30, 26, 30 acres somewhere in there that we hunted on and could go fishing on and uh, or whatever we wanted to do and cut wood. And, and uh, growing up, we always played in the woods and stuff like that. And, and <clears throat> like most of Appalachia... Um, probably not too far away from game lands, national forest, river valleys, things like this. Just the, the typical bit like you get in Appalachia. Yes. Uh, where you were, you said neighbors were around but not too close, a ways away, stuff like that. Um, would there have been people that might have had livestock, chickens, things like that? Just... Um. At that time, we do have uh, neighbors that were across the street from us. Um, kind of where we were located, there was a dirt road that right off the main highway. And just across there was a neighbors at that time that were living there years ago. Did have a few chickens, uh, some goats. So typical stuff. Yeah. Typical stuff. No cows or anything like that. Right. We had horses. Yeah. yeah and okay. uh, that's about all. I was in my, we had cattle, but that was before I was born. Yeah, that pretty well paints the picture. Is there any uh, lore or tales or anything that you remember the old people saying about, uh, or saying they would hear things, or anyone ever say they saw anything, or, or it was a pretty, pretty. It wasn't really mentioned or anything, so there was no tales going around about this certain monster or anything in these woods. Nothing. Okay. All right. Nothing good. at all. No. Uh, your uh, your your relatives had a farm there, and and you were. You were coming around and you were helping out, as you were telling me. Uh, if you don't mind telling the story, what was going on? Well, um, I was probably 10, between 10 and 12, mm -hmm. and I started doing that. And, uh, and at that time, uh, we started hearing uh, sounded like loud screaming, like a horror movie, a woman screaming in a horror movie. Mm -hmm. This is anywhere between uh, 9 o'clock at night and 11 o'clock. It was always seen to be right in the same couple of hours. Um, the 
the house that I was in uh, had some pretty good sized windows that opened up. Um, and so at nighttime, we always sit in the kitchen and let the, you know, just talk and the breeze coming in. We'd sit around and talk and stuff. And, and uh, the first time it happened, we all just kind of sat there and looking at each other. And I, and I looked over at my dad and I was like, because I was young, I was like, well, what was that? And he says, oh, I think it was probably a bobcat or a fox. It's always a bobcat or a fox. And I was it? like, I've never heard that. I don't care if I hear it again. Yeah. And, uh, well, that summer, well, that matter of fact, for the next, it was like four nights in a row it did this. Mm -hmm. Then we didn't hear nothing for a while. And I believe it was the following summer we heard it again. And now, do you think it, so it might even have been like the same month? Because a lot of people think that there's a cyclicalness to this, like it, maybe a migration. Or yeah, something. I think it might have been right around the same time. Okay. The same, it, both years at the same time. Mm-hmm. And then again, and, and again, he's like, I said, are you sure that's what that is? Because that's awful loud. And that's, I mean, when you, if you hear it, it makes the hair stand right up on the back yes. of your neck. And, uh, and my grandmother at that time actually lived about a hundred yards away from the house. And I used to be able to walk to her house without a flashlight. I wasn't afraid of the dark, <laughs> but I used to be able to walk to her house from that, our house to her house with no problem after I heard that. I always had a flashlight with me. It was a good sized light, and I always kept our dog with me. Whether he'd help me or not, but he just felt safe having the dog with me. Probably take off running. But a little bit of heads up. Anyways. Yeah, something to, you know, they, they can sense things before we do. So, but uh, no, I never, as far as that went, uh, definitely something that I've never heard. And, and since then, I've never heard it again. Now, if we, uh, so, so that's around the old kind of hobby farmstead. And if we if we fast forward a few years, we come into uh, folks are getting older and, and you're helping out and, and you're working on the fields and keeping things up. And, and what what was going on then? What happened then? Well, uh, we always had uh, PAS mode uh, lived between uh, Goldenrod Field that had a lot of, you know, your Goldenrod and hawthorn trees, crab mm -hmm. apples, good grass, pheasant hunting area, and stuff like that. And, of course, that night up at the woods. But we always kept paths, at least three of them opened up that went down in the woods because we used firewood. We had fireplace. We could down, haul firewood out of there and uh, hunting season. Everybody walked the paths going back in there. So we always kept them mowed down pretty neat, pretty nice. Yeah. Um, um, my father uh, was the one that mainly did that all the time. Um and it was uh, probably, I was probably 15, because I know I wasn't driving yet, but I know I was close to it, 14 or 15. And when my father got sick for a while, and uh, I kind of took over the mowing and stuff, to open yep. the trails up. And uh, I uh, was, this one summer, which, in, I don't know if this is the same month, but the, with the other two, the screams well, and that, but it was definitely in the exactly. summer, but... Um, I was mowing a trail, and I always go down this one this one trail. Um, so, I, just to be clear for people that don't live right here, you're on a you're on a tractor with a, a mower behind it, pulling like a bush hog type of thing. No, actually, it was a it was a mower was under had a forty eight okay. inch deck under. Oh, okay, like an Alice or yeah, something. Yeah, like, okay, it was it was gotcha. actually a, a Cub International. Okay, it was a forty eight. So we're making it's an old one. We're yeah. making a little bit of noise as we're yeah. heading down through yeah. the trail. Okay, yeah. good. it wasn't extremely loud, but it was right. loud. Mm -hmm. um, and then every time I'd go down these trails, I'd get to the end of them, and I always had a spot that uh, was made for turning around to go back up the other direction because we kept two swaths. Yeah. And uh, well, I started back. I started back this path. It was the last path. That was the last one for the day, and I had the other two already done. And uh, and it was probably uh, late afternoon. And uh, I started back the path and it wasn't thinking, just a normal day. And uh, I got towards the end and I went to swing the tractor to, to back it up into the spot to go back up the other side and something caught my attention off to my right. Mm -hmm. Well, where I, where I stopped to turn around is where the field actually meets the woods, literally. It goes from goldenrod to trees, forest. And, uh, and I, something caught my eye and I, but I, I put the tractor in reverse anyway and backed it up. I thought, well, I'll catch a glimpse at it while I'm backing up and I'll stop. And I stopped and I looked and I thought, well, it was a bear. 
and it was down on all fours. And at that time, bears wouldn't have been real common to this area either. No, no. Once in a while, we have one, had one go through, but you didn't see a lot. Yeah, so it'd, it'd be it'd be something you'd really take notice of. Oh yeah, you did see a bear. Yeah, yeah. So I was like, I was like, stop, and I, I never got off the tractor. I just sat there watching it, and uh, I'm gonna say it was probably a good. I'm not real good with yards and that, but I'm going to say maybe 60 to 70 yards from him. Mm-hmm. It wasn't 100, I can tell you that, right. but it was probably 60 to 70 yards. And I sat there and watched it for a good 10 seconds or so, and it was like it never even paid attention that I was there. And so then the, the more I sat there, I thought, well, this is pretty cool. I'm getting this bird's eye view of this bear, and I'm going to watch it. And, uh, and after about 10 seconds or so, um, it stood up. And when it stood up, it wasn't a bear. Um, I just remember, I remember, it was like I wasn't scared at the time for some reason. I just remember looking at it, and I know my heart started racing, because I was, I know, I really wasn't scared, but I could feel my heart racing. And I looked at it, and I was like, what am I looking at? And it probably stared back at me, for another 10 to 15 seconds and it it i did got no odor off it i didn't smell anything and, and i i knew because i've always been interested in these things right and i've always watched movies about or programs about monsters any type of monster sure and uh i always heard well they still they have a stale smell or frank smell to them um i never got a whiff of them but i sat there and he kept it just kept i don't know if it was a guy a boy or a girl or what but it was like kept looking at me and it finally just turned and like walked away, like, like uh, I'm not paying any attention to you, you like, know. No. And he, he just felt like he wasn't in any threat of any kind. And I, actually, at the time, I didn't either until I watched it till it disappeared, and it never got back down on all fours again. And I never knew a bear to walk that far on its back feet. I know they can walk a ways on their back feet, but this thing walked. Right. I watched it till it disappeared. It was probably over 100 yards by the time because the hill doesn't drop off for the point I watched it till at least another 100 yards. But I, he just kept getting smaller, but I kept watching it and it disappeared. Oh, my gosh. And, uh, and then as I started back up the trail again, then I started I started shaking because I was like, what did I just look at? And, and I was like, kind of sped the tractor up to get back up towards the house. I never said anything to anybody. Because I thought, you know, first of all, they're going to tell me I'm full of you know, right. water. And, uh, but, um, when, when you, when you saw it, uh, was the lighting such that you could make out any particular feature or any definition or facial features or, or anything? Its or was face, it too its face was, uh, def- you couldn't really, it's like the face was covered in hair. Mm-hmm. There was no, like a, like a monkey, you know, monkey's face is kind of. It was, it was hair and it stood there and, uh, cause I, I was looking right at it trying to, there was no snout on this thing. Mm-hmm. No bear snout. Right. This was a flat faced uh, creature. Uh, brown in color, black in color. More black. More black. It was more black. Yeah. Cause I thought it was actually a black bear. If I realize this was a long time ago and you're on a tractor when everything goes down and stuff, but if you had to guess the size on it, could you guess the size on it as far as possible? Everything's right? pretty frozen in my mind because, like I said, I've always been interested in those things and yeah. it, everything's pretty, I, it was like, when I think about it, it was like yesterday. And I know it was years ago and there'll be a time probably when I do start forgetting stuff about it, but um, it was here about the size of these things. I'm going to, it was over... It was it was definitely over six and a half. It was probably seven foot tall. Yeah, seven seven to seven and a half. As far as uh, its build went, it wasn't extremely huge. Right. Now I was heard some people saying, you know, I was four foot at the shoulders. From yeah. This, side. this one wasn't no four foot at the shoulders. It was probably it might have been three foot at the shoulders. It, it, and I mean, just as conjecture, like maybe maybe it was a female that would account for the not super massive width and maybe being a bit more docile. Maybe or things maybe. could have turned out differently. Maybe if that was a male too. So it's probably a good thing. It was a female. Yeah. That might not have been a good, I might, I might've been going a little faster than that at that time. <laughs> Jeez, Cause I was definitely, fun. yeah, but it, she, if it was a female, she wasn't at least been interested in what I was doing. She had a mission and she was going to take care of herself. Yeah. 
like I said, it was still probably, I wouldn't, I mean, it was, it was a good size, it was a good size creature, you know, there was nothing I'd want to walk up to. Right. Like I said, it was, it was, it was a good, probably seven foot tall at yeah. least. And, uh, cause I, I actually, a couple of days later walked down in there and I never, don't ask me why I didn't do this, but I never thought to look for footprints. Mm -hmm. I went down to the area where I saw it, walked over to where the trees were and about how high its head was. And it was definitely had a couple feet over me easy. Yeah. And, uh, as far as saying it was eight foot or something like, I can't tell you that, but oh, it was man. at least seven. And, uh, and it probably, it was all 250 probably. Yeah. I mean, I'm 250, 260. Yeah. And, uh, and it was now at that point I wasn't, I weighed about a buck 45 at that time. Um, but, you know, I was definitely, definitely the way I look at myself now is definitely bigger than I was. Yeah. Even its leg size, arm size. And its arms, its hands stopped between its hips and its knees. I mean, it, it, literally. Now, I, that's one thing I couldn't tell because I was at, I could not tell how big the hands were. Right. I just knew that those were her arm, their arms and the hands were at the end of them. Yeah. And, uh. But it was real scraggly. I mean, it was black, had black hair. Like I said, you couldn't hardly tell its facial, fe facial features. Um, just kind of a roughed up unit. Yeah, sometimes they are. Sometimes they're they're said to be very neat, and other times they're said to be all gnarly and matted up. It's yeah, that's what it was like, real net, matted up and shit. It was nothing. It looked like you know, he'd been having a rough time of it. Yeah. Do, do you feel like... That you had made eye contact with Oh, it. yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, it made eye contact with me. Because, like I said, I, I watched it for a good 10, 15 seconds. And I know it seemed like shorter than that, but I know thinking back that it was at least it was, long, it was at least 10 or 15. It seemed like it went like that. But I can remember I was just I was just sitting there and I thought, well, this is this is a pretty cool deal. I wish I had a camera to get a picture of this bear. Now, I wish I had a camera. I got a picture of something else. But it stood up on its feet and it stood there looking at me. And I know that it saw me because the tractor was running. It probably heard the tractor running. Oh, sure. And it was probably trying to make out what I was because being part of the tractor, sitting up on the seat, and it couldn't see, but just from the top of my head to my waist, the yeah. rest of it would be in front of the seat and the gears and stuff yeah. like that. So it was probably trying to figure out what it was looking at. You know, isn't it interesting? Did you ever consider if you wouldn't have been perched up high on that tractor, if you'd have been just some kid out there walking, fishing? You probably would have never have seen it, and you would have walked right by it and never even have known probably. it was there. Well, it? like I said, I, I was turning around. Yeah. If I had kept going straight, the path was longer, I probably wouldn't even look because I was so, I was trying to make sure the path is cut the way it's supposed to be cut. Right. Even though there's two swaps to it, I just, you know, there's rocks and stuff, roots. I didn't want to be tearing blades up from underneath the deck, you know. Yeah. And so if I would have had to have gone farther, I would have never saw it. But yeah. I, it just happened to be right at the turnaround, and it was like, Dead smack in the middle, right where the field stops and the floor starts. Oh man, that's so. And uh, and it was just, it was like the coolest thing. And it actually took me a couple of years till I got older, and it got to be a late teen, in my late teens. Then I wasn't quite as afraid anymore. But being a young teenager sure. and that, and uh, seeing what I saw, I was like, I mean, even after that point, my grandmother was still alive and living behind us, and. My dad would send me up there at 11 o'clock at night to check on her. And right. I was like, oh. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. Seven foot, still seven foot. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. I, did you, were you able to tell many people or anyone about this? Or did you just kind of keep it to yourself? Uh, yeah. Or I kept it to myself. Yeah. Yeah. I, I think uh, a lot of people do. Because when I can remember being young anyway, kids are kids, but I can remember telling them uh, not that I didn't have a little white lie now and then right. trying to make some little kid had a story, but I had to come up with one better sure. than that. But, uh, it's part of I being can, from Appalachia. Yeah, I can just remember, though, that uh, you could come up. You know, I I had several stories, one in particular of a uh, family going to Florida, and we lost our brakes in the Kentucky mountains, and we almost had a 400-foot drop. Or if we went three more, <laughs> we went three more feet. And I told that story at school, and the teacher even said I was lying. <laughs> so my dad had to get down to school and straighten her out because it really happened. So I really, I thought, I'm not going to go to school and tell my friends what I saw. They're going to tell me that I'm so full of it. Right. And they're going to be making fun of me and everything right. else, you know, so I'm never going to end of it. And so, yeah, and I never even told my my family. And uh, until recently, I thought I had told my wife, but 
Um, we found out otherwise yeah. very recently. <laughs> yeah, she told me she never heard this story after like, 20 years of marriage. Well, I know, like, initially, when you first started telling me your story and stuff, I know you, it seemed like you were very hesitant to tell me, and I really appreciate you uh, telling me and coming in, too. That's really awesome. Uh, do you have any idea in that exact area where that where your sighting was, any of the whys, like what it would have been doing? Do you feel like maybe it was hunting or gathering or rearing well, young or looking? Or It could have been a male, too. We don't know. But any ideas on what it might have been doing there, or just simply observing you? Um, like at the time when I, when I said when I first saw it, it was down on all fours and it could have been in there eating crab apples. I don't know. It yeah. could have been just chowing down. And I mean, there was a lot of some apple trees back here that weren't crab apples, but they uh, always had just like green apples on them and stuff. So mm -hmm. when we, even though we were told they'd get stomach aches, I used to go back here as kids and eat these sour green apples all yeah. the time. And uh, so it could have had a Plus, heck of apples. It was, remember, you could take those and you could have one on the end of the stick, stick and you can whip, whip your buddies it. with yeah. them. Yeah, yeah, yep. good times. Yeah, we got in trouble for doing that a few times. <laughs> but, uh, but yeah, it could have been had some apples there. But like I said, it was definitely scrounging on the ground for something. And uh, and for the life of me, I just I guess I just didn't think about any of that stuff. Yeah, yeah. Like I said, I went back and never thought to even look for footprints. And that was like the dumbest yeah. thing. Oh, it's a pretty traumatic experience. I wouldn't beat myself up too bad over it. That's... I was just, I was just kind of curious. I went back. I was just trying to figure out how tall it was at that time, and but now I uh, and I've never experienced anything. So I can tell you another thing that I did experience that it just came to my mind was a couple times when uh, during the time when we were hearing the screaming. Yeah. Uh, every once in a while, it could be in the middle of the night when we're all sleeping. And, uh, and this happened probably at least three, four times. We hear something smack the side of our house. And classic it behavior. just, everybody, I mean, it woke you up right now. Yeah. And it was loud. And, and uh, of course, my dad, he always, my dad always had a shotgun next to the bed. Mm -hmm. And he'd take right off out the door. And uh, there was never anything out there. Yeah. We'd turn on the outside lights. You'd never see nothing. And then. A couple weeks later, we'd be sleeping again, or we'd be, it'd be just before bed, we'd be watching TV or something, and bang, right on the side of the... We thought maybe there was birds flying into the sides of the house, you know, and stuff mm -hmm. like that, but it, that, after dark, um, and number one, right. if it is a bird, how big a bird is, it's going to make that right. kind of a noise. Well, the other famous one is, oh, that's the house settling. Yes. You know, the, this house has been sitting here for a hundred years. And, yeah, you know, now it's settling. Yeah. yeah, now it's going to start settling. Yeah, I hear that one an awful yeah. lot. Yeah, that was one of the things he used to say. The house is settling. It, it's way more comfortable to think your house is sinking than to think that Bigfoot's outside. <laughs> I guess. <laughs> Must have been in some serious denial, or just didn't find believe in it, or anything like that. That really makes you wonder what the older folks really. Well, because my dad and his brother were the only two boys. There was no sisters or anything, and they all grew up in that area. Yeah. And uh, and back then. Um, being that young and they they were all into uh even as teens loggers and stuff like yeah. that and every, rough people yeah. yeah and they all everything was in the woods yeah. working in the woods and he just never brought up i mean um i wasn't it wasn't until just a few years before my dad passed away that he actually started telling me stories of the, the war that he was in and he never talked about it yeah never it, it's a generational thing you know like my folks are probably the same age as your folks and uh you know I've heard the tales, my mom would joke around and say, oh, stay out of here, you know, because of such and such monster that's down there. Well, years and years go by, and I find out, hey, you know what, that's a really good Sasquatch area, so maybe that's the monster the old people were talking about when we were little kids. You, you just don't know. Or maybe they just never said, and maybe they did know something. People were just different, the older folks. They kept yeah. a lot of things in. Yeah, because there's definitely, uh, I know they hung the, this one area, uh, I won't mention, but uh, they hung around there a lot, and uh, it was by a bridge at a creek, mm -hmm. uh, a good sized bridge, and an old uh, bridge, a yeah. real old bridge. Yeah, yeah. Um, and my friends and other people that I know that weren't necessarily—I mean, it wasn't like I wasn't friends; it was just associates or whatever, you know—that um, were down in this area at nighttime would experience things. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and I'm thinking, well, why are we? this generation why are we experiencing things down in this area when i know they they were down there a lot oh yeah because they fished 
I don't know if I did growing up. Before school. Before television was invented, too, and video games and cell phones, people were going to be in the woods, especially young people. They're doing things. They got up in the morning and fed the cows and the chickens, and then they went fishing, and then they went to school. That's how early they got. Yeah, yeah, that's a fact. And it's like, so why this area that I know of, and I'm thinking nobody's ever said anything. Neither one of them, my dad or his brother. Yeah. And, uh, but, so it makes you wonder if they ever... It, it's a shame nobody wants to listen to the, you, you don't want to listen to the old people until you're the old people and by then you can't listen to the people older than you because they're gone too yeah. soon old and too late smart yeah <laughs> yeah well yeah. john we uh we sure appreciate you coming in and uh, sharing your experience with uh, us uh, just, we had a great time appreciate you having me here oh man it was, was uh, just kind of nice to actually tell the whole story yeah to somebody yeah. and uh, like i said i've kept it to myself and i really haven't told my wife the whole story but um i just it's something that keeps bottled up inside of me and it'll probably stay bottled well, and you can't discount the fact that you can be helping a lot of people too because there's a lot of john does out there that have had their own experience and they feel much like you they don't have an avenue they think they're the only one they feel isolated they don't want to say because of the ridicule so that's awesome that you come forward, and um, I think you're doing a lot of people a great service. Yeah. So thanks again. Yeah, thank you. All right. Well, have a great night, hey, my friend. Be well. All right. Thanks. It doesn't seem possible. It's just too much of a reach. Science doesn't prove it. Where's the dead one? No one has a dead one. There aren't any bones. There's no teeth. A car would have hit one and killed it by now. I have hunted all my life and never seen one. I'm from the country. Raised cows since I was born. I've been a logger for 30 years and never saw nothing. There's millions and millions of people on this earth. Someone would have a good video by now. All those cell phones, all those game cameras, where's one good picture? Valid. All valid points. Very logical, very sensible, very comforting. Until, until 800 pounds of legend shows up. Now you can smell him. His eyes luminous. 
You're close enough to hear his voluminous breathing. Science and logic just caught the last bus out of here. You are now facing what shouldn't and can't be. Standing on the shards of a broken paradigm, you don't need a watch to know what time it is. It's zero Squatch 30. Jim Smith, thanks a lot for coming into Zero Squatch 30 tonight. Uh, really, really thanks for coming in because I know this is an unusual set of circumstances on this and we really appreciate you coming in to share your story with us tonight. Uh, for all the folks that are listening, uh, maybe give us an idea of what the circumstances are of this particular sighting, uh, what was going on. Just w walk us into it, lead us into it. What was going on, Jim? Uh, it's a pretty unique circumstance. So I was growing weed with a guy, and we were just doing the average whatever, you know, gorilla style growing. So you would go into a random spot, <clears throat> you know, throw some plants, whatever. So we do this, and then two weeks later, we go to our plants. Okay, now hold, hold, let me stop you right there. Okay. okay. Okay, so, all right, so we got a couple young guys, and uh, yeah. you guys... Oh. Yeah, we were young. <laughs> okay, so yeah. you're putting your stuff out, and uh, to the average person who maybe doesn't know the process on, on what we're doing, we're taking out some young plants, we're hiding them in the woods, you're, yes. getting, them, you're getting them as, as hit as you can, Yeah. Uh, obviously just by the nature of this you're going to be real remote where you're going with yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. I mean, we're way back to nobody's around. You're not... And now, is this, is this daytime or nighttime? Daytime. Okay. Daytime. All right, so you're sneaking in as stealthily as you can in the daytime. Yeah. In the deepest yeah, woods that you can possibly find. Yes. And you're taking these young plants out, and you're... It's basically like you're moving tomatoes in a garden. Yeah, 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 yeah. They're just buckets. You're taking five you gallon... Or five gallon buckets. They have plants in them. They have a plant in the dirt and everything. No. I want to have, you just sit it there. It, probably everyone understands this, but I just want to emphasize that you're trying to get as remote as you can, as far away from people as you can, as, as concealed as you can. Yeah, yeah. It's a scary place where we're at. Okay. Basically. Okay. okay. I mean, it's swamp. It's got everything. That's what the, the terrain that we were in was actually swamp. Like, you had to have boots to wear, even boots. You went over, so like hip boots. I had hip boots that I wore. So, so you and your partner are going into a swamp. Into a swamp. And it's a we deep wear swamp. them out. Everything was cool. It's in this swamp. Like I said, we all got wet the first time because we didn't realize how wet it was. But then put them there in buckets. So are you are you putting the buckets in close proximity to each other? Or are you putting one here and one way over there? A forty yard circle. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So there's one here, one there, but all pretty, you know, about 10, 15 yards apart, at least. Okay, okay. First was on a tree. And there, two trees had fallen down, so there was a Y and a tree under it. So I could put a bucket right there, and it would be a bungee over a tree, and then to another tree, and had it stable. Stable, yeah. Stable. And then the other buckets, we really just kind of put them in bushes that were growing up there. There were ferns, and I mean, these ferns were thick, so you just hollow the spot out, <clears throat> and it basically was there. So you're, you're, you're hiding these plants in the existing floor, 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 floor basically, yeah, yeah so into this ass that nobody would go into. Right on, right on. No yep. animal would even go into, I don't imagine. I can't see any. You know, so we're so we do our thing. Everything's done. Two weeks later, we come back, and the first now again for the people that don't know how this works, you're coming back in two weeks. Are you coming? Just looking, and it's stormed. We just want to make sure no buckets make over. Make sure everything's standing. Uh -huh. Okay. All right. So it's a couple weeks later. You come back in on where you've got your stuff. Yes, up. and we have. The first bucket's knocked over. It's just not even there. It's totally off the 
two trees and this is like the one the side. You had secured this one. Yes. Okay. Off, and now it's off the side. Plants laying there, and it totally looks like I assume slugs had eaten it. And then we go to the next one, it's knocked over. Next one's knocked over. Next one's knocked over. Everyone was knocked over. Okay. We're like, oh my god, we're like, holy shit, we gotta secure these now. And then we secured the shit out of them by breaking stick or like branches off. Because you're in this thick ass swamp and there's little freaking five foot saplings that are, you can break off and use for a right. stake. And we staked every plant down. Okay, now let me ask you there. Was there ever a point in time where you thought, Somebody else is growing here, and they found our stuff, and they're sending us a message, and they kicked these. No, over. no, no, no. You're uh, just thinking. Uh, the never storm seen growing. any people. I thought storm got it, and slugs ate that. But now, it was just you had to see it. It was like stripped, but the bottom was left. Stripped, like nothing there, but the stick. The roots and the stem are there. The green everything was there, there, just ripped out, and the greenery was gone. Like, maybe slugs did it, but it was done peculiar. So, I, I didn't even think twice about that. <clears throat> so, now, we're going to forward in now two and a half months later. Okay. Now, it's come, we had went to them two other times that were fine. There, everything was good. Mm-hmm. Stakes were holding... So, now, we come to the first one, and it's just gone. And I look down, and the roots are all even even dug out. And it's just like, and I, at the time, thought, or whatever. I didn't really know. I was confused on how something had tipped it over and <clears throat> dug it out and ate every bit of the root. So... The stem and the Everything. greenery. Everything's gone. Nothing's there. Oh, okay, okay. Dirt that had been rummaged through. Okay. And bucket tipped over. Sticks tore out, gone. No sticks there at all. Not one stick in the ground. None. Nothing. It gets wiped out, gone. Bucket over. Just dirt on, like, three, a quarter of the dirt left. Well, now again, in this circum, in this instance, did you think somebody? No, 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 no people. No. You're still thinking, still you're thinking wildlife, and you're in far enough that you know. So that really speaks a lot to how deep in the woods. Yeah, 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 yeah. I'm just in. <laughs> so then we go to the next one, and it's the same. Like, wow, well, the whole shebang. Still, I'm not. <laughs> It's just baffling to me what's going on. I'm just like, okay, this is gone. It sucks. And then again, and then again, and then again. All gone. All not there. All nothing. Buckets. All roots gone. Just roots the buckets. Gone. The corner of the dirt. Left. Every bucket took a tour over every stick out. No yep. sticks left in anyone. Nothing. Now I got buckets to imagine. over dirt. Tore out all the roots, gone. Not one root. I got to imagine that these plants are getting close to maturity. So they were done. We were coming to pick them. So they're heavy. That each plant's gonna <coughs> with the they with were, the roots. They weren't huge by no, any means. No, they were decent. Yeah, no, no, they were heavy. Yeah, yeah, they're not heavy. The, the so, plant themselves not heavy. Heavy, but not, at least a pack. You know what? Okay. With right. everything, yeah, you know. Everything's relative. Okay. Yeah, I, mean, right. I, I don't know how heavy. Okay, but they're gonna be heavy. Ish. It wouldn't be. It wouldn't be Five sensible. Five plants is gonna be a bundle. It wouldn't be sensible for somebody, somebody to take the roots with them. But yeah. it wouldn't be sensible to take the roots with them if somebody. We was hadn't normal. seen them for a month, so maybe they had done it one by one. But you know, I True. don't know what order they went down or anything like that, or if it all happened at once. Right. I assume that it happened. You know. Like he waited after. <laughs> if it is Sasquatch, he waited and then said, well, I'm going to wait till the buds are nice. And you can get some nice and juicy. <laughs> okay, so, so five plants are gone. Oh, the buckets I, are still there. Everything everything's is still gone. there, yeah, yeah. 
Okay, so you're thinking then. Dirt strewn out of the bucket. Just no where, where do you think they went? Where do you think the plants went at this point? Coming now, I was just thinking that coon. All I could think that the only animal that I could possibly imagine going in there was a coon. And the, but I guess way into that swamp. I mean, to where I had to have boots, to where the last couple buckets. I mean, it was just strange to me. Now. What's we're, your partner thinking? Is your partner? We, we're both just pissed, you know, because we'd already been up the road a long ways and had two other come up missing, but they were just gone too. Now, when, but, when you walk in, when you walk in on your plants, is there a strong odor about them? Is something with a good nose would it find? Oh yeah, 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 yeah. Usually, so okay. usually, generally good odor. Okay. So we're there. We gather everything and actually we're so pissed we leave everything because the buckets are still kind of heavy we're gonna come back we come you now you gotta come through this tunnel this swamp is horrible you had to come through this horrible brush tunnel and like all scrunch down almost crawl for about 10 feet so we come through that tunnel and we both stand there and we're like whoa okay that is a smell i have never smelled before like, uh, to describe it, I thought hard about this rotten meat, mink, <laughs> mink musky, oil. Yeah. musky meat, right. a musky meat smell. And then as we, you come out of the swamp onto a beach, little beach, like, I guess, neck, I guess is what it would be called. And then the road's not too far, but it's a beach neck then to it. And we come up onto that beach neck, and then pow, it's just like in our face. Like, what that is, smell is like smell. consuming us. Like, it's there. We do, nobody's scared, but we're just all to this. Mo nobody's ever smelled that smell ever. Never. Right. You know, right. it's just. And it's that kind of smell you can step in and step out. Yeah, of. I mean, it's. Nothing you've ever smelled, so you, <laughs> you're just like, wow. Huh. And then now, I actually said to him, dude, I think f***ing Sasquatch stole our weed. And he, <laughs> and he just kind of like laughed it off. And I'm like, I'm telling you, what the, what does that smell? Right. And then, and he kind of chuckled, and he still, he was going to come here, but he didn't. He couldn't make it. It's kids. Right. So, but, yeah, that's the odor. The odor that you cannot explain. In uh, the area where you were in, this is an area that's it's kind of infamous and, and known for activity. Yeah. And I, I know the area I've walked in there before, right. and it is uh, as remote as it gets. It, it's scary, because, you know, you're off a road, off a road, off a road, you know, off yeah. It's horribly remote. It, you know, I think about, like, I know woodchucks will eat roots. I know deer will eat the tops. Yeah. I know different oh, animals yeah. will feast on different well, parts. It just happens that you pull the plant out, hang it upside down, and the most THC supposedly in the roots, and it runs out of the root. Some people rip it out of the plant, rip it out of the ground, put it right in boiling water, and then hang it upside down. Mm -hmm. So it shoots through THC out of right. the roots, but bottom line, there's a lot of THC in the roots. Right, right. <laughs> well, in but there's no animal, there's no animal that that goes with the whole plant. Like I don't care if you're growing corn. <laughs> there would have been something water. there. You would have thought. Yeah, I mean, no animal is gonna <laughs> consume the entire. You would have thought plant. there would have been something there. All I could have thought is I hadn't been here in a month. You know, because we had seen them a month before that, and everything was cool. We're like, yeah, looks good. We'll come here next time, and it'll be it. Because we didn't, you know, this spot, you don't like to go there much, but it's remote enough. You don't have to worry about it, but you don't want to be seen there a lot. So right. Even coming in and out, uh, whatever. Yeah, yeah. I would love to get a, a hike into this location. <laughs> 
to see like you know what yeah. kind of structure and all that kind of stuff is. I think you're right where it's at. Oh, it's man. easy to get there, man. Yeah, yeah. It it, it just it that's the part that really gets me. It's so it's like scary. That <laughs> the swamp is just scary, intimidating. Yeah. And that's just what you would want for what you're doing and all that kind of thing. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That, you need it, basically. Yeah. Because <laughs> everything looked good. Yeah, yeah, except for you had, uh-huh. com- you had company in the woods, and yeah, right. he, he was there before you He were. watched. I don't know if he was thinking maybe I was dropping him some more off. <laughs> but it, was nice of him, it was nice of him to wait for you to get the plants done. Yeah, right. yeah. I, I'm pretty sure that was his freaking thoughts. <laughs> After he said, well, that was good, but it could have been better. Take yeah. a whole week. They couldn't, what happened. they couldn't win there, in there and munched on him <laughs> after you'd, you know, had... Well, like you said, it that could last do. month, I don't know how long. You know, I don't know what could have happened. Now, is, does the plant have the, the strong odor when it's younger, or is that something that comes about when it hits maturity? Uh, it comes as it matures. When it buds, yeah, 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 that's yeah. when the odor yeah. starts coming off. It'll, yeah, pretty much. They smell little when they're young, but they smell only just a tiny little plant, so amongst everything else, it doesn't stand out. When you got the smell, uh, were, did you have the scary feeling when you got the smell? Like, like, because a lot of people say they have a feeling of fear or sickness or whatever. I didn't have anything but confusion still. Like, what the hell was going on? <laughs> like, oh my god, could this be? You know, man, wow. Well, you know, know. It, it's an omnivore. Yeah. It, and it, it eats so many wow. things. There, There's one more thing you could add to the list. I mean, there's good there's so there. well, there 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 are so people. many people that eat marijuana. Yeah, it's just, that's, yeah. Look, look, at yeah. Health, look at the health benefits. Yeah, right, right. right. Yeah. Yeah. We knock him around when he took everything. Yeah. yeah. I mean, and he's like, all right, I'm taking it. I'm going to take it all. Yeah. He, he's greedy. <laughs> you know, at least leave me something, man. That's a lot of work, big boy. Well, Come on. Man. If you ever decide to get back into that mm-hmm. game, you have to you have to try that. Spell. It was a total bust. That was <laughs> all three spots were bust, but the other spots we saw the plants. You know, the buckets had flipped over, and the plant was there dead or whatever because of the month. Like I said, it had been a, month. a couple of them. You know, they were there. We took them. What that's here. The whole thing was a bust in our eyes. Maybe maybe Bigfoot's a teetotaler and he doesn't want people growing weed in his soil. Maybe. Maybe he's a meat. We call him mad fisherman. People would just kill it. <laughs> <laughs> but it was gone. Usually a mad fisherman like, water it with diesel. Or, I've had him do that. It's, yeah, it's quite the mad fisherman. <laughs> Bigfoot. Yep. Well... Thanks for coming in and sharing your story. Hey, That's yeah. a, certainly one of the most lighthearted ones I've ever heard in a, a memorable <laughs> one, too. And uh, I sure enjoyed it. And uh, thanks for giving me a walk down memory lane. And uh, yeah, right. great to have you. I have grown up since then. I didn't mean to say that. <laughs> well, thanks for having a good memory. And thanks for sharing. And uh, be well, my friend. Yeah, no doubt.